Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out today. Central venous pressure tracings or waveform basics. Uh, we're going to decipher the mystery of the CVP waveform, what the different parts of the waveform mean, how they correlate to the cardiac cycle, um, how to interpret abnormalities, etc., etc. If you're interested, we have our Patreon paying page linked in the video description. On our Patreon page, we do put um, some outlines for the different videos. Here's the CVP tracings. So if you had an interest and want to join the Patreon page, you would have access to kind of follow along um, with these uh, outlines uh, while learning the video. All right, no further ado, central venous pressure tracing waveform basics. So Central venous pressure we talked about in a previous video. We'll link it in this video's description. It's the introduction to CVP. So definitely check that video out because it kind of lays the foundation for understanding this video. But in that video, we talked about how central venous pressure, CVP, is a surrogate for the right atrial pressure. And we talked about how to get a CVP measurement, you need a central venous catheter that sits right at this cavoatrial junction. This is the superior vena cava. This is the right atrium. We'll just finish the diagram right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. This is tricuspid valve. This is pulmonic valve. This is the pulmonary system. This is the aortic system. Uh, this is the IVC, inferior vena cava. But we talked about how a CVP measurement is right at this cavoatrial junction where the superior vena cava intersects with the right atrium, cavoatrial junction, cava atria. Um, and to get that measurement, we talked about how you really need a central line in either the internal jugular vein or the subclavian vein. Uh, we also mentioned how you can get it off a pulmonary artery catheter as well. And we will just sketch it quick, right? If you have a human here, this human's got a long torso, here's their head. We talked about how they have their heart here. And we want to measure a pressure right at this cavoatrial junction. And to do that, you have to have a central line going in to the superior vena cava, right? That's what we said, dumps into that right atrium, the superior vena cava. To get into that superior vena cava though, which we'll say is measured, uh, represented here, um, you need to either access it through the internal jugular vein, or there's another vein called the subclavian vein. And if we were to zoom in on a person's head, we'll say here's their head, all right, here's their neck. We drew a long neck just for the sake of the drawing. Here's their shoulders. Again, we'll say their heart's right here. The internal jugular vein travels through the neck and then dumps into the superior vena cava. The subclavian vein travels through the chest and uh, dumps into the superior vena cava. So that's internal jugular, that's subclavian. And you could put a central line, either poke into the neck and string it all the way down to the cava atrial junction, or you could poke into the chest wall and string it down to the cava atrial junction. So you need a central line in either the internal jugular vein or the subclavian vein, a femoral central line. Femoral vein is uh, veins that run through the groin, so you could put central lines in as well. Will not give you a CVP measurement that's worthwhile. You can certainly get a pressure off a femoral central line, a central venous pressure, but it won't be um, an accurate cavoatrial pressure that you can use. So one of the benefits of CVP is the waveform tracing, because it can tell you about what might be going on. But to do that, you have to understand what a normal central venous pressure tracing is. Now remember, we said that this catheter that we're measuring the CVP off of sits right at that cavo atrial junction, or where the superior vena cava meets the right atria. And the pressure that it is experiencing is going to be a product of the cardiac cycle. And this red line, red here, is going to be the CVP tracing or CVP waveform. Whereas the green line is actually uh, the electrical cardiac telemetry tracing, right? So I want you to just focus on the red line for now. In the red line, we have five different parts, right? We have the A, C, X, V, and Y components of the CVP tracing. This is 
one uh, kind of one CVP cardiac cycle, all right, ACXVY. And if you can picture that central line measuring the pressure right at that KVHL junction, and then we're going to start a cardiac cycle, and the CVP goes skyrocket high into the A wave, and the A wave is right atrial contraction. If you need help picturing it, we're going to scroll back up. This is where we're measuring the pressure, right at the cavoatrial junction. So when the right atria squeezes, all right, that's going to increase the pressure in the right atria, which is going to increase the CVP. Now what happens is you get that peak, and then you start to descend until you get this little blip, this little increase again, this C wave. And the C wave is early systole with the tricuspid valve bulging into the right atria. So if you need to picture that, so the right atrium finished squeezing. Maybe we'll erase some of this to uh, make it easier to, to visualize with less scribbles. So the we said the first wave is that A. A goes up, comes down into this little increased blip. Right, so that's A. A is right atrial contraction. This blip here, though, is the right atria is done contracting. All the blood's flown into the right ventricle. The tricuspid valve has closed. This is the tricuspid valve. It's closed now. And then the right ventricle contracts. And the right ventricle contracts and shoots blood through the pulmonic vein into the lungs. But when that right ventricle contracts, even though this tricuspid valve is closed, it's still going to push on the closed tricuspid valve, and it causes that valve to just kind of bulge up a little bit, right? Just bulge up a little bit into the right atrium, and that in little bulge up in the right atrium increases this right atrial pressure just a touch, which causes this blip up on the CVP. That's the C wave, all right? So you can see C here. So you can picture that, right? Atri uh, a wave, this is the right atria contracting. Right atria is done contracting. It starts to relax, right? So that's right atria contracting. This is the right atria relaxing. The pressure starts to go down. This is that tricuspid valve bulging is the C wave, and then it keeps relaxing, right? That's the X, mid systole when the right atrium continues to relax. Because after this valve's closed and all the blood's pumped uh, into the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve bulged upwards as the right ventricle is contracting, the right atrium is actually expanding outward. It's relaxing. And since the CVP measurements right here is this right atria relaxes, you're going to get this kind of whole down slope. That's the X descent is the right atria contracting. Or sorry, relaxing. So then you get to this this uh, trough. And this trough then goes into the V wave because the right atrium is empty of blood now. We have the right atrium that originally contracted, all right? Then the right atrium was done contracting and it started to relax. As the right atrium is relaxing, the right ventricle contracts and that pushes the tricuspid valve into the right atria, causing the C wave. But the right atrium still re is relaxing. So the X descent is as the right atrium continues to relax. But now the V wave is the right atrium starts to fill with blood again. All right, so late systole with rapid filling of blood into the right uh, atrium, that's the V wave. And then the Y uh, wave is early ventricular filling. Um, it's early diastole with early ventricular filling. That valve started to open up, the right ventricle is starting to fill with blood, and then it's right before the atrium then contracts again, and that goes back into the A wave. All right, I know it sounds confusing, but if you just picture the cardiac cycle, it should all start to kind of uh, add together. So I'm going to see if I can erase all of my drawings here, and that way we can go through it without all the scribbles. So if we start and we picture that central venous catheter sitting right at the cavoatrial junction, and then we start a cardiac cycle. The A wave is when the right atrium starts to contract, and it increases pressure right at that cavoatrial junction. Now, the atrium's done contracting. It starts to relax, so the pressure goes down. 
as it's relaxing, the right ventricle contracts and it bulges the tricuspid valve into the right atrium, causing the C wave. Uh, once that's done, the X descent is just the rest of the right atrium contracting. Right atrium is, or sorry, relaxing. Right atrium is now relaxed and empty. It starts to fill with blood, right? That's the V wave. The right atrium is filling with blood. Then Y is when that valve opens and some blood starts to go into the right ventricle. And then A again, when the right atrium contracts, right atrium relaxing, tricuspid valve bulges into right atrium as right ventricle contracts, but right atrium keeps relaxing. Now blood starts flowing into the right atrium, then blood starts to empty out into the ventricle, and again, it starts again. If we look at the telemetry strip, this might be more confusing. If, if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. But for those of you that are still with me, um, this is telemetry. So this is a P wave. P wave is an atrial contraction. And we have a whole EKG series linked in the video description. This is the QRS complex, and this is ventricular contraction. Okay, so P is atrial contraction. It lines up, right? This is right atrium is contracting. Then right atrium relaxes. QRS is when the ventricular contracts, ventricle contracts, bulges that tricuspid valve into the C wave. All right, atrium still relaxing. This is a T wave. That's ventricular relaxation. So that's when the atrium still filling with blood. Again, opens. A wave starts again. So that is a normal CVP tracing. Definitely let us know what thoughts, questions, comments you have down below. Um, it certainly is confusing on our Patreon page. We'll post some practice questions intermittently, and we can all talk about them together as well. Um, and we're going to go into some abnormal CVP tracings too uh, in future videos. So definitely check those out. We'll link them in this video's description once they come out. We hope that that provided some additional information. Hopefully you can look at the monitor uh, next time you have a CVP tracing and kind of picture that cardiac activity. Uh, in any case, we appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.